Welcome back, YouTubers and casual YouTube audiences, to the British Fish Q&A. I am Mr. Parkin. This guy sitting next to me is NJ. Oh, oh, oh. What's up? That was Catching! Bad. What's up? <laughs> Catching, yes. yes. What's up? Uh, no, that's, sorry, that's, that's your thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to yeah, if you want to answer questions, uh, comment section. Up that's, there, uh, below. Yeah, what, what, the, what the hell's going on? We're doing each other's what, thing. Question one from Aaron Kreis. Hey, uh, 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 that's, that's my thing. You don't read the questions. You... Don't you dare. Aaron Crace. When Seth Rollins comes back, do you think he should be a baby face? No. I think if they're going to continue the feud against Triple H or actually start it, I think he should be teasing the face turn so that match can happen, possibly at the bigger pay-per-views like SummerSlam. Yeah, I think he should return to the baby face. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I do. I mean, when he comes back, he's going to get a massive pop. And the guy, I believe he could be a very good baby face. And... They could definitely freshen up the roster a little bit by having him as babyface and having some different feuds out there. So, definitely. especially for what happened with Triple H and the way he went out with the injury, you've got to imagine this guy is just going to get a massive pop when he gets back. So, you kind of have to make him a babyface. And at the time, again, I'm not sure what state Roman Reigns will be in, but we didn't really have the Seth Rollins Roman Reigns feud. Not really not properly, think. No, so maybe at this time after the triple h feud because i think that may be one of his return feuds maybe range will be healed i don't know but somehow i would like to have that feud done properly who is your oh, don't make me say this i don't care <laughs> who is your favorite soccer team manchester united and i also support peterborough united the Bronco, which is my local team busters united <laughs> <laughs> are they Chinese? Uh, NJ, are you going to do more live streaming videos and raw reviews and WWE pay view reviews and previews? Uh, 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 go. No. What? Why? Okay. Because I, 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 you, don't, you don't have to say anything. I know why. Why? What's the point? That you you got to remember this guy has watched WWE pretty much since he was a teenager, since the late nineties, and he's watched Raw pretty much every week. It's gone to the point now where Raw is so bad <laughs> that he just doesn't want to watch it anymore. It's Unless it means him doing a Raw rundown with OK Babe on a Monday night at like 5 a.m. here. That's it. Would you like to see a Dean Ambrose versus Alberto Dorio at WrestleMania 22, sorry, 32 in a ladder match for the United States Championship and Intercontinental Championship? Uh, no. Because, I, I, to be honest, I think they should be doing a bit more with Dean Ambrose than in a... Than in a you know, I, I, I don't mind them you know, having the titles uh, unified and you know, in a ladder match of all things. But I think Dean Ambrose should just be in a bigger match, personally. As much as, uh, again, I've said this Especially in the past the Q&As, D Dario, I'm still hoping for the best for him because it's nice to have concentration on a non-British-American wrestler. Hispanic wrestler. Well, let's go with that word. So I'm hoping it's so good for him So. If they're going to concentrate him on the mid card, why not? Dean Ambrose, you know, out of the three Shield members, I'm still waiting for his big moment. So if they're going to make him be the one to unify the mid card championships, I don't think that's a bad thing. But is Alberto Del Rio versus Ambrose a WrestleMania worthy match? Well, if it's a ladder match for both the titles, it probably would Could be. Add but up, yeah. I just, I don't, I mean, I just, I don't see the dynamic. I'd rather have Ambrose in another match against like a Jericho or something. I'd rather, I mean, with all these injuries, I think Ambrose is one of the top baby faces on the roster right now. So you've got to spotlight him in some kind of way. So, I'd, I mean, I'd want him in a bigger match. It's just, just, especially with all these injuries. That's all I'm saying. Um, next set of questions is from Seamus Dillhan. Uh, yeah, the first one's football, so you might want to put your put your hands in your ears and hum for a little bit. Can Bayern Munich realistically challenge for the Champions League title with Barcelona being so dominant with their attacking prowess? I think the only way Bayern Munich could possibly win the Champions League is uh, with Pep's big plan. I think that's really the only way they could possibly win the Champions League with Barcelona being so dominant. Uh, that, that, that is all I'm going to say about that. Uh, why do you think there's so much emphasis on wrestlers having five-star classics these days by having spot fests instead of the moves actually meaning something? I just think it, it, it's the way wrestling has changed. Um, 
you know, Dave Meltzer started judging matches on star rating systems and by working and stuff. Like that. And, you know, it's just, and it's gone to the point now where that seems to be the pinnacle for most wrestlers because they've grown up with that, especially independent wrestlers. And that is why there is so much emphasis on wrestlers having a five-star classic. Now, if it's just based on the moves and the high spots, then fuck that. But if it's based on storytelling and the emotions and the psychology and the characters involved, then yeah, then go for a five-star classic. But if it's just moves and spot fest, then just the, the, the match has to mean something. It can't just be a spot fest. I'm sorry. I'm going to say these days, five-star matches are spoken about or mentioned because yeah. We're waiting for a current five-star match because recently we've not really had that. I can't think of what... We have a lot we... of good matches, just not five-star matches. That's but... the thing. I think bands are waiting for yeah. a current, you know, wow, that match had everything for it. Here's the thing, though, is there's not going to be a storyline in the WWE which is going to allow for a five-star classic. That's the problem. There's no storylines in WWE anymore, no good ones. So people are just focusing on the in-ring. Well, I think there's been chances. Like, yeah. when was the last time you saw WWE do a good storyline? Well, we almost could have had to with Taker. Taker, well, Sting didn't happen. I mean, Daniel Bryan's probably the last one that was a good storyline. Then before that, probably the Summer of Punk that that ended up being complete crap. But you see what I mean? Like, there's no there's no storylines there which allow matches to be five star classic because you can't just base it on the in ring work. Cause that's just stupid. I I think they've got the potential with the talent they've yeah, got definitely. coming in or injured that are coming back to possibly create a match that will make a five star. Like, if they ever do it, I think they could possibly not put it up as five star, but the story would definitely be good. Eventually, do. The Shield triple threat because fans want to see it. They've if once they if they've all got built up in time for next Mania or something, I think they can make a huge story there. But obviously, right now, I can't think what else would be a good five star or could have the potential to be a good five star match. For you. Uh, whoopee whoop! Hello, uh, whoopee whoop! Whoopee whoop! Uh, my question for you guys is. Do you think that the part-timers taking the shine from... Sorry, do you think that the part-timers are taking the shine from the current roster today? Um, to a degree, but at the end of the day, WWE have got to sell network subscriptions. And one of the ways they're going to do that is by introducing these part-timers like Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, pe- you know, names that people know because they haven't... Because, uh, because they just haven't been able to build up household names you know, from their own roster. So, I mean, I don't mind it necessarily because from a business standpoint, you're always looking to try and get the most eyeballs on your product and to sell the most network subscriptions. But at the end of the day, there's going to come a point where them guys ain't going to be there anymore and you've got to you've got to set up the next generation. And at some point, that's just going to have to happen. And WWE, instead of just doing it one night, are going to have to fucking do it one night and stick with it. I'm going to say, yes, it does matter because right now, the roster you've got is the future. The roster you've got now is what we're paying to see each and every week or what we should be paying to see each and every week. No, it doesn't matter because the guys should be coming into or back to the WWE to face the talent that we want creating. Not coming in and giving us a business match against John Cena, coming in and creating a storyline with a below talent than Cena create him up so I personally would like to see guys like The Rock face someone below John Cena I would like to see Batista who right now is no interest coming back to face a lower talent that's why I'm praising Jericho because AJ's just came in he's a new talent for the company having a feud with Jericho could be good for AJ so I think at this moment in time use the old timers for a little bit longer to help the current ones not john Cena and stuff but the uprising talent to have a feud moment win see exactly what you mean uh nothing else needs to be said there robert hernandez if you could bring any tag teams from any era to be in the wwe at the same time what would be your 10 teams of first tag team Ten. champions oh. oh there are loads of 
we could have a field day with this. Obviously, Dudley's, Hardy's, Edgy Christian would be there. Oh, boy. I think, yeah. So, Legion of Doom would be in there. Um, the Horsemen would definitely be in there from WCW. Um, also, the, the the New Age Outlaws would be in there. I mean, there's there's so I mean, there's so many tag teams like, especially from the older days like the Midnight Express and you know the British Bulldogs, the Rockers, the Heart Foundation. There's ten right there. So if I had to make one of them my champion, if I had to make one team my champions, though, I would want to make a team my tag team champions that I feel like I could put in the main event. And I feel I I just. I've always been a fan of these guys. I feel like I could put the New Age Outlaws in the main event and they would entertain. That's all I'm going to say. If I was to make bring, uh, you said any tag team, any tag team, I would bring back the Crime Time. They didn't get what they deserved. I'd bring back because I think he's doing horribly in the WWE right now, even though his promo skills are not bad. Bring back Miz and Morrison, you know, because Miz is not doing great right now. So I'd have them. I don't name him recentish ones, but. You know, ones that I felt could have done better, and I would like to see them back as a tag team in the tag team division now. Uh, we've seen it out again. He will miss Mania. What do you think WWE should do to save their ass at Mania without using, without using too many big Beautiful names like question. Rock or Brock? Um, well, unfortunately, the answer is going to be, let's use big names like The Rock and Brock Lesnar. Well, again, again, I think the way it's going even though Brock is partly used, but he's used at fast lane, is Triple H using the boss to put up against the newer talent they want to put over, which is Roman Reigns. So I think that's not going to save it, but at least it's a match that has a story behind it and is a match that makes sense and could be great for WrestleMania worthy. Um, like we mentioned earlier, the unification because that's an exciting match for the mid card at least i'm not saying it will save it but at least it would be something worth watching sorry what question oh yeah the uh save. J- J- john cena um sorry I just, I just lost attention with that question as soon as john cena was mentioned um the problem is it's not just about john cena is injured it's the fact that every single person on the roster seems to be fucking injured so uh, and, and at the end of the day wwe can blame injuries but at the end of the day, WWE should have created new stars to be able to go into the place of John Cena. Because right now, we've got ones that are not injured. Kevin yeah. Owens should be better right now. Ambrose, he's been there a while, and I still don't think he's had his moment. He's not had his him. moment, yeah. yeah. We've got... Who else is not injured? That is the top... Rusev, I'm still waiting for him. He's had that John Cena thing, but I'm still waiting for him to be. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's another one. So they've got guys who, like Miss Parker said, if they were built up correctly or had better chances, by now they'd be able to be the chosen ones to possibly take Cena's place in big matches. You'd think WWE would have got their ass into gear, wouldn't you, and sorted this, but obviously not. Uh Attila Getsy, uh, Gets T, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, do you think WWE should promote some of the NXT wrestlers to the main roster now their top stars are injured even going past WrestleMania? I mean, I think they should introduce, especially with all these injuries right now, I think they should introduce some people on the night after WrestleMania where you kind of expect new people to debut. I mean, let, let WrestleMania pass forward and then debut some new people when you know, the attention can be on them as opposed to WrestleMania. I don't, I don't think they should bring. I don't think they should bring anyone new in now. Save it for after WrestleMania. I was close to saying that because I think the war after WrestleMania. Yes, you don't want too many big names. Like the injury people are going to come back, so you don't want to debut mm. NXT guy and the return of an injured wrestler. Because that's going to be well. Which one's going to get the most reaction or concentration, shall we say? But I do like the idea of NXT taking advantage of that special Raw. What I would do, especially if they're almost ready to come up to the main roster, we've said this in past Q&As, and I want to re-emphasize it in this Q&A, is the pre-show kickoff matches. I think if they're ready to come up to the, almost ready to come up to the main roster, why not have an NXT guy face a WWE guy on the pre-show? Or have an NXT title match or something on the pre-show. Sounds good, yeah. Something like that. I mean... Um, Thoughts on TNA on Pop TV? I have. Uh, yeah. Oh my god! Um, it's 
one thing I'll say here, it's amazing to see how far TNA have fallen. I mean, I know I ranted about the show that did 2 million viewers because it, I do you remember that rant? Mm. But the show I ranted about did 2 million viewers. 2 million viewers! And now they're doing, what, 200, 300,000? It's just, ah, oh, it's just amazing to see how far that company has gone down. And why anyone would care about them now is beyond me. Beyond me. And you actually thought their debut on Pop TV was pretty good, didn't you? I did. But have you kept on watching? I've kept up with Volker's reviews. Please subscribe to him. I think he's brilliant what he does. But... I think Pop TV, I'm going to give it praise because they know that TNA's declining and stuff. But they still took them on. So I think they're a saving grace for TNA. Yes, they're not the biggest TV network. Yes, it's sometimes hard to find a stream. <laughs> but <laughs> a, a perfectly legal stream. Oh, may, yeah. May oh, I, pay, I pay so much money for the mm. streams. But I think it's good that there is still networks that would take them on. So I think... Thanks, Pop TV, for the TNA fans to still be able to have some access to it and to keep the TNA wrestlers in in a job, shall we say? Oh, gift. Oh, wow. oh, it is late, guys. It is. It's like it nearly is. midnight when we're recording this, thanks to the fucking internet dying. Um, all I'll say is um, I feel sorry for Full Killer having to review TNA every week, but the guy obviously has a passion for it, so I'd say keep going, Full Killer. Obviously, I think a lot of people prefer his old edited reviews, but in a bit, you know, with the busy lifestyle that people have, live, live streams are just the way forward now. I, I miss cutscenes of wrestlers speaking. And <laughs> what and stuff. the fuck? Yeah. Black hole. <laughs> Black <it>. hole. <laughs> are you serious? Oh, there's so many. There's, 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 there's a sleeping one as well. Oh, there, there, was, there was so many. Uh, good props to Full Killer. Uh, do you think Enzo Amore and Big Cass will have an NXT title run? And do you think that they should have won the tag no. titles a long time ago since they're the longest tag team in NXT history? They should be on the main roster by now. I was about to say, I don't, don't, I don't think they're going to get a tag team title run. I think they missed their chance at last takeover. I think the WWE are going to grab hold of them sometime soon. Because I've seen they've had a dark they've match dark SmackDown. Match, yes. So I think it's... They're not going to get that tag title, which they do deserve, and they should have got. They should have got an NXT Brooklyn. Yeah, so I think the WWE are going to just think, you know what, Triple H, what are you waiting for? We're taking them, and hopefully make them tag champs on the main roster. If anything, just to see how the people react to them. I mean, put them in a few dark matches, put them in a few, you know, put them, put them occasionally on TV, introduce them as a big deal, just... Just want to see how the casual audiences react to these guys because the NXT crowd love them. Yeah. It's a little bit different going from NXT to the WWE main roster, but let's just see how let's just see what kind of reaction these guys get. I do say on. one thing to Vince, who has poor judgment, as you heard in our last Q and A, but I do not change a thing about them. They've got the crowd chanting in their intros during the outro. Fans love them. Their moves are what's made them so mm. likeable. So Vince and their their look don't change a thing about them because you did the same thing to the jobber big machinery guys who teamed up with Cody Rhodes. Oh, Stardust, sorry, whoever they were. I've got their names now. All all I'll oh, say, oh. all I'll say <laughs> is I can't remember what I was going to say now. But I mean, at the end of the day. Don't ch don't change mu that much about them. Yeah. If you're going to change one thing, just make sure they're not always saying the same thing because they're going to be, you know, on NXT, they're probably on it once, you know, probably once every three weeks. I believe it was Don Tony that mentioned this or Solar Monster, one of the two. I can't remember now. I just get so lost in these podcasts. But in NXT, they're doing this once every three weeks. It doesn't get as stale. But if you're going to be doing it every, you know, Raw, SmackDown, you know, live event, you know, change little things about the speech that they do every now and then. So people can still get into it, but there's a few differences into it. And also, at the end of the day, if you don't bring him as a tag team, bring Big Cass in on his own with Enzo More as his manager, because Enzo More is a great mouthpiece. If they're not going to do that, at least they could do that. I, as much as I agree with that, I think they'd be safer 
especially with their build up through NXT to remain a tag team. That's just what I would Yeah, no, I'm just saying that'll be that'll be plan B. because uh, Big Cass is big. Um, WWE like that. Uh, why do so many WWE fans say the product sucks so much, yet they watch it every week like sheep? <laughs> very, a uh, very good question. Um, there's a few reasons for this. Number one is, you know, when you're a fan of something, you don't just give up on it and you live in hope that it's going to get better. It's like me being a Man United fan right now. I, for the last 20 years, I've been used to Man United winning league titles and winning FA Cups and winning the European Champions League. And I've been used to United being a successful team. Now I'm having to get used to United being a top four team and not necessarily the best team and maybe even not even a top four team. It's difficult, but it doesn't necessarily mean just because they're playing bad football that I'm going to stop supporting them. And I believe it's the same with a lot of WWE fans out there now. So with me, I, I, it wasn't that difficult for me to stop watching, just because of the circumstances. If it was on from like, if, you know, if it wasn't on from one till four, I probably would still be watching it. That's just my phone, NJ. Don't worry about it. But when you're a fan like that, um, it is difficult, as you sort of found out, to stop watching it every week. You know, and it's just. That's that's just the way things are when you're a fan of something, and I think you you can definitely you can definitely detest by this. I've been, I've been trying to say strong because mm. you've said exactly what I'm about to say. Because yes, as we've mentioned many times, I still take part in a raw rundown. So obviously, I would have had to watch raw to take part in that. Even though I've said multiple times how the WWE has affected how I feel about the company and the direction they've been going in for quite some time. But yeah, I think the biggest factor in that is because it's been from my childhood to now and I don't want to let go of something that's been such a huge part of my life. And plus, Triple H is still around. Um, but yes, I think there's a lot of strong uh, story and importance to it to a point. Even though there is that factor, I still have feelings of this is not good yeah and uh, we'll get to the point soon where you'll just stop watching i think the only reason you're watching raw right now is to do the rundown with okay fave afterwards it's pretty much the way it is isn't it um but so we're not but yes so does this just because you don't i mean would you still be a wwe fan if you didn't watch raw i think would you still clash yourself as a wwe fan i don't think my love for wrestling is gonna go hello birdie um that is my bird i know i thought so um I think even though it's like OK Bay branches off and stop does his raw rundowns, wrestling's still going to be a huge part and so I appreciate and admire. But yeah, I'd still appreciate it and call myself a fan. Yeah, but there are a lot of people out there that will watch it like sheep, but that, that that's that's just because it's part of their job or it's just something that they they do every week that they can't do without. For this question, bah, bah, that's what I'm saying because I'm one of those people. Bah, bah. I'll tell you what, it feels good to not be a sheep. That's all. Uh, that's another Q and A uh, from us, the British Fist. Bah. And I have been Mr. Park, and this guy sitting next to well, this sheep sitting next to me bah. has been sheep, sheep NJ. What's up? Very, looking very sheepish and sounding very sheepish too. Bleh. See you guys next week. Any questions, put them in the comment section, please. Bleh.